Hey everybody, welcome back to another business analysis video to our series tips from the experts. And today we have an amazing guest, a brilliant business analyst who's here to share with us her knowledge. So welcome Lungile Mguni. Yes, yes, it is Mguni and thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Peppa, thank you for having me here. I'm really honored to be part of this uh, uh, series. Yes, I'm so happy to have you on here. Um, I've been following you for a while on LinkedIn and I love the things that you share. I love that you're a speaker and a thought leader in business analysis. And it's such a pleasure to have you on this series. Yay. Um, okay, so let's go straight into it. Uh, could you please give us a brief introduction of yourself and your journey as a business analyst? Well, thank you very much, uh, Pepe. As you would know that I am, I am based in South Africa. In fact, I was born and raised in South Africa. And yes, I do have just over 12 years of business analysis experience. And the experience is really uh, uh, comprehensive in terms of uh, being exposed to different countries. I've had an opportunity to work at about 14 African countries doing business analysis Amazing. and my journey really started um, over 12 years ago where I worked in the banking industry and in the banking industry in our South African context business analysis is one of the key roles in terms of how do we bring business and information uh, technology together. So a BA plays a role in terms of translating those requirements that a business would have. So with that, I've then acquired formal qualifications in business analysis, which I have studied through Rhodes University. And I am currently studying with the University of Cape Town, pursuing my second degree in information systems. So yes, and I'm currently a business analyst lead in the Af uh, Absa Bank, which is a uh, an African uh, bank also globally recognized. Amazing. So many, so many educational areas of business analysis that you've covered and um, so inspiring as well, even to me. <laughs> Very inspiring to me because I've always been the, the type of person who doesn't, I don't really enjoy studying. <laughs> Um, but to hear your achievements and the things that you've done around business analysis and your contributions is really, really inspiring. And I hope to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. So um, my next question is around the business analysis skills, right? One key skill as a business analyst that we should have, apart from the top one, which I think is communication, another one is negotiation skills, right? Um, in your experience, what strategies do you think or do you use to prepare for negotiation, meeting with stakeholders, especially as I know that Stakeholders can be quite difficult sometimes. Um, this is where our communication skills comes into it. Um, but if you are in a situation where you have to negotiate uh, with the stakeholder, what strategies can you share with us today? Wow, thank you, Pepper. That's very interesting. And indeed, it, it, it remains one of the key skills that a BA should have. And I, I'm glad that you asked that because... I am currently dealing with quite a stiff <laughs> stakeholder. Uh, yes, as I've mentioned that I'm in the banking industry, you know, currently right now we are faced with so much of cybersecurity issues, fraud issues. So one of the projects that I'm currently leading, it has to do with uh, fraud solutions. And negotiating is just part of the game. You know, there's so many requirements that a stakeholder will deem as priority, that they will deem as key and, and so forth. And as a BA, I find that for me, understanding the needs of uh, my stakeholder, understanding their business, you know, and also understanding the nature of their own customers. That's one key strategy that I have used in the organization because that for me already aligns me in terms of identifying those quick wins that I do believe that my stakeholder can soon realize the benefit 
or the value of what we are doing. So definitely a clear communication plan and also knowing where and how to communicate with your stakeholder will really lead to proper uh, good negotiation. Understand your stakeholder, understand their need, you know, and then you are able to then say what's priority, what's not priority, and how do you guide your stakeholder as you want to achieve the solution for them. Hmm, that's really, really interesting. Um, it really, really helps to know who your key stakeholders are are so that you can then begin to know how to collaborate with them to speak with them uh, and ease into that negotiation of requirements for instance very interesting yeah that's a good tip thank you so much um okay (laughs) Uh, another one of the skills that we should also have is emotional intelligence which Uh, I feel like a lot of the soft skills kind of link with communication in some way. way. Yeah, you can't negotiate without having good communication skills. Um, You you can't sort of portray your emotional intelligence without having good communication skills, right? Um, But yeah, but in, in your experience, how would you say, how important would you say is emotional intelligence in understanding uh, as well as navigating stakeholders' reactions and stakeholders' needs? Well, thank you so much. I would really uh, lean more on building relationships, right? Mm-hmm. You need to build those professional relationships with your with your stakeholders. And obviously, you've got, you, you can have different stakeholders in the same project or in the same solution that you are you are you are working on so for me really what i've seen work is building those relationships based on the different stakeholder need right and now when you talk emotional intelligence there's situations where the stakeholder will not so be so clear with what they think is the problem you know, and you have now gone in, you have now gathered requirements, you have defined the requirements, and you are getting to understand what exactly is the problem. Now, you need to to be so well equipped in terms of how do you emotionally do not harm your stakeholder or negatively impact the stakeholder when you're coming across to say, you know what, actually, this is not the problem with your business or with your area but the actual problem is this so that's when you need to to be ready for any feedback because one of the things that grows a business analyst is receiving feedback could be good could be bad could be negative feedback how you translate that feedback to your strengths requires some serious emotional um emotional uh, intelligence you know because you will find that you you are believing that you are doing it the right way you are communicating you are showing up you are facilitating and validating your requirements but then when you ask stakeholders for feedback or sometimes stakeholders will give you feedback without asking they just throw it at you especially when it's criticism you know and how you actually use that criticism turn it around for your own learning for your own growth it requires some some form of um emotional intelligence so that's very important as a ba to have that in your toolkit will really um take you far um that that's really interesting i couldn't help but think um as a business analyst at the start of my career whenever i would receive negative feedback whether it's from stakeholders or from my manager I I feel so withdrawn right and I feel less confident uh, and then I don't know how to come out of it right Um, uh, and I feel that a lot of our viewers a lot of subscribers who are new business analysts or aspiring business analysts might be asking that question of okay yes I should have emotional intelligence right but how do I begin to address um, certain negative feedback how do I come out of it right be positive and come out of it do you have any tips I know that's not part of our list of questions <laughs> what do you think are there any tips you can share and allow me to 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 be on the other side because yes. I often play a lead and I have to give that feedback sometimes you know okay. to say that in this area we need to improve or you are not communicating with the stakeholder in 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 a manner that is appropriate or you are not showing up in terms of facilitating uh, skills and so forth so sometimes you find that i am giving that feedback 
and I am not receiving the positiveness in terms of the person that I'm giving the feedback to. So it is very important to, 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 build, to build up to a feedback. If I get a feedback from my stakeholder once, once a year, you know, it could really impact how I receive it. But if I do have like iterations, regular check-ins with my stakeholder, by the time I received that feedback, it would have been building up, building up because of the check-ins that I'm having, because of the regular meetings that I'm having with my stakeholder. It's not easy to receive negative feedback when you are getting it once a year. And now you're thinking you have a whole year now to rebuild your confidence. You have a whole year now to come back out of it. But I think it's important to have a build up. Do not wait for great milestones in the project, but set up those regular check-ins. Of course, you don't want to bombard your stakeholder with unnecessary information. But when you are clear with what needs to be delivered, you can then start setting up those regular check-ins and when you receive the feedback, you are able to go back, fail fast, learn, yes. and come back. And you are now ready to say, I've learned from this. Going forward, this is how I'm going to apply this. You see, so that your feedback is not a once-off now, you also need some time to come back. So I would really advocate for regular check-ins. Mm, that is such a great tip. Such a great tip. And I like the saying, fail fast learn fast <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. something that we can so take away from today and apply the learnings you know yes. and move on you find that whatever struggle that you are having this year or on this project you are not going to experience with the next project yes you might face new challenges but that one you have dealt with you have learned from it now you've got the learnings in your toolkit should come across the same situation or similar you know exactly how to attend to it yes yes that is such a great tip. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, okay, so going on to the next question is about balancing multiple uh, priorities as business analysts. It's sort of a common challenge that we face. Um, how would you say a business analyst should prioritize these sort of projects and tasks um, Yeah, when they have multiple things to, to work with? You know, uh, Pepe, what I have what I have uh, learned with business analysis is that planning is as important for PAs as it is for project managers, right? Planning your time, planning your your, your work will help to prioritize exactly what is it that needs to come first, what is it that needs to 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 come second, and so forth in your plan. So in a case whereby you've got uh, different priorities, initiatives that you are actually involved in, that's where your planned game needs to come in. And be sure that you are communicating to your different stakeholders and you are also keeping a record of documentation in terms of your communication so that you are not caught off guard to say, on this initiative, this was a commitment. However, now it's lacking, it's being impacted by the other. But also as a BA, learning to say no, you know, mm -hmm. learning to say no, learning to say right now, I've got so much on my plate. And for the next three months, this is the focus because you don't want to be a jerk of all trades. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you're mastering none of them. So mm -hmm. learn to say no, and that is going to help you to communicate better and also to advocate for quality delivery, you know, because different initiatives will have different uh, delivery requirements. So those are the things I need to look at. Have a clear plan, learn to take on what you can deliver and communicate. And also, yeah, and it, it sounds like, uh, it sounds like old, old ways of work, but it is important to keep a track of your communication with your stakeholders. Because some stakeholders, especially sometimes when it's not in-house or it's contract consulting houses and, and stuff, you always need to have that form of um, track record. This is what was agreed on. This is what was signed up. And these are the initiatives that we took on. And this is how we've performed in each of those uh, initiatives. Yes. Yes, those are really great tips. So it's really starts from planning. 
having that set plan, knowing exactly what you want to deliver as part of your priority list, having a plan, um, keep that regular communication with your stakeholders as well as keeping track of them um, and learning to say no. That's a very important one, especially for new business analysts. Because when you first become a business analyst, it feels like you want to do everything. You want to please everyone, right? Yes, 100%. You're thinking it's learning opportunities, learning opportunities. Yes. There is nothing wrong with just with learning one skill at a time. You know, saying I'm a BA, I want to learn facilitation. How do I facilitate, you know, uh, workshops? How do I get the best out of my stakeholders when I'm doing interviews and so forth? There's nothing wrong with that. But then we want to bring all the tools and the techniques, you know. So yes. it's very important that as junior BAs join organizations, we have sort of like a mentorship program where we take them on, you know, and translate how they how they grow from being a junior BA, intermediate to being a senior BA, a lead BA. It doesn't happen overnight, but we also need to understand that these are the requirements or the responsibilities of a junior BA, of a senior BA, and, and so forth. So that's very really important to know and understand. Yeah, definitely. I think another one also, is, which again forms part of communication, is uh, maybe speaking and clarifying your expectations from your manager so that you know what to prioritize i think that would be a good tip as well for new business analysts 100 percent, yeah 100 percent. because what you understand as your deliverables exactly. may not be what your manager understands as your objectives you know and also we need to be clear in terms of timelines are we setting three to six months goals are we setting a one-year goal you know because you could be working so hard and so well on one project only to find that you are actually expected to deliver four per year because it's each a quarter. So having a clear understanding of what are my objectives from my perspective and what I'm understanding is the same as what my line manager understands. Mm -hmm. And then when we contract, we both agree that we understand exactly what is it that I need to deliver? Yeah, definitely. So um, as part of these um, sort of learnings, are there any, do you know, or can you share any sort of tools or techniques that can help uh, BAs to manage their workload effectively? Oh, yes, definitely. I know, and I'm just going to be quoting back onto uh, IBA. I, I think about the fact that as a business analyst, you know, there are things like your camp board, you know, camp board, which actually helps us with task management, right? And some of these, you can, uh, we can access them freely from the internet. Now there is a whole different world of AI, you know, there's different tools that we can use to, to manage our, our priorities. You've got your trailers, you know, you've got um, your, uh, uh, softwares that can actually assist in task management. So I do believe that as BAs, it's also important to stay abreast with what's happening in our industry, what's happening with the world of technology, so that we are using the latest and greatest tools and techniques. You look at how the world of AI is evolving. There's more AI tools, and some of them are now being recognized by organizations in terms of protecting their information and so forth. And some of them are tools that you can also use at your personal capacity. You know, your chat GPT, you know, it can help in improving how you do your, 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 your requirements. Obviously, there are cautions because every uh, behind every AI, there's a human still, you know. So yes. we also need to to be careful in terms of we do not uh, therefore um, jeopardize some regulations, you know, and some policies. I do advocate for a responsible use of AI, a responsible uh, implementation of AI because that those tools can be very biased. So look at what is it that you, you require, what's the end goal, and go for a tool or a technique that will be actually relevant to achieving your goals. But honestly, the resources are there and it's just a matter of knowing which one will work with you. Yes. Yes, those are really, really great. Great tips. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks so much for sharing. So the next one is, 
How do you handle situations where priori priorities change unexpectedly? How can aspiring or new business analysts handle that? Can you give us maybe an example scenario possibly on... You know, it happens a lot. It happens a lot in, in, in the banking in the banking space. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that it even happens a lot in, in other spaces. As much as I want to say that we need to be flexible and, and adapting, you know, as much as I want to say that we manage these situations by communication and so forth, but we also need to be realistic with the scope creep, right? Mm -hmm. It happens so often that business would have agreed to a certain solution or requirement, and then later on there is change. There is change. And and change can come, <laughs> it can come at any time, right? It can come because there's a change in the government uh, rules. It can come because maybe the economy is not responding as expected to a certain solution. So what we need to do, and quite honestly, I think we've learned this, you know, recently with the COVID situation, mm -hmm. how we had to just adapt, how we just had to be flexible, you know. I think we are we are living in a world whereby as much as we can plan, we cannot really predict what's going to happen tomorrow. And for that reason, we should be open to change, but change with, with governance and change with uh, that in mind that we may need to change. However, what are the implications of the particular change? But I would really advocate that as we look at your Azure methodologies, you know, we need to be uh, adaptable. We need to be flexible for us to be able to, because the solutions that we're working on today will not solve the customer problems tomorrow, right? So you find that right now, even in the banking industry, the, the, the competition is so stiff that banks are no longer even competing with other banks. They are literally competing with a street vendor, a street vendor who can now tr transact for customers. We, we are no longer competing with uh, our, our peers, but we're just competing all around because tomorrow we don't know what technology we'll wake up with. So adaptability and flexibility will really help us in those unexpected changes in priorities. Amazing. <laughs> I'm kind of lost for words. There's so much information here to take on and I hope that you're all finding value in the information that Lungile is sharing with us. Um, okay. So coming back to our final question, um, what advice would you give to new business analysts who struggle with managing multiple demands? We all start somewhere, honestly, you know, and I do believe that no man is an island. As a new PA, find your community, right? Find your like-minded people. There are platforms, there are professional bodies that you can be part of. And also, even before going out to find a community and a platform, use the resources at your expose, right? The resources that you are being given in an organization. You've walked in into an organization, you are a junior PA. There is a, a, a repository where documentation is stored, you know. There are SMEs, you know. And you, you, you need to open yourself up to learning because one of the key things about business analysis and also as a new BA, because a new BA is not only someone who just graduated and joined an organization. It could be a developer who's saying, you know what, I want to translate into business analysis. It could be a, a, a tester, a, a, a quality engineer. The most important thing that I have found with being a new BA is the ability to unlearn and learn, and learn those habits that we thought they are business analysis related, mm -hmm. and learn your ways of doing things, and learn your ways of, uh, and, and now try to build a new learning, a new database of learning, given the fact that you're going to engage different people, you are going to find a community, you are going to now establish yourself by Starting your library, start a library whereby you are you are you are saving and storing different types of documents. You know, you are going through different types of uh templates, you know. So I will really say to a new BA, 
unlearn the old habits, open yourself up to being part of a new community, and thirdly and most importantly, build a library. Build a library. Have a folder where you are saying, you know what, these are the documents I'm coming across as a BA and they and these are the templates. You will find that you will soon start building new templates yourself, you know, and never, never stop learning. I've got a motto that I go by that says, when you stop learning, you stop earning. And this has less to do with monetary value. But when you stop learning, you stop earning skills, you stop earning knowledge and information. So never, never stop learning. And learning can be formal and informal. You know, there's so many online learning tools these days. You've got your Coursera, you've got your Udemy, you've got your LinkedIn learning, you know. So go there and and learn. Because honestly speaking, how we used to gather requirements 10 years ago is not the same way we are yes. doing it now. You know? So as a new BA, open yourself up to learning. And yeah, find a community of like-minded people Listen to podcasts, watch videos, and honestly, you will start building up that confidence as a new uh, business analyst. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, knowledge is power. Keep learning, keep searching, uh, and keep trying to, to reach your business analysis goals by every means necessary. <laughs> um, Yes, thank you so, so much. It's been such a pleasure having you here. Um, for my viewers who would like to get in touch with you, are you able to, to share your information? Um, that would be great. <laughs> yes, thank you very much, uh, Pepper. I am reachable okay. on uh, on LinkedIn, yes. And uh, my name is Lungile uh, Mguni. And also, if you search under the IBA South African chapter, I am there as one of the executive board members. So definitely I write articles and I do public speaking as well. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so, so much once again. Um, I look forward to meeting you very soon. <laughs> um, and to our watchers, our viewers, I'll leave Lungire's details in the description box as always thank you for watching please don't forget to like subscribe and share this content till i see you in my next one peace